Hey guys, back again, and today we are going to be working on the guard pieces for this mini killage right here. Uh, last time you guys saw this, it was being forged out of a piece of coil spring. Uh, just gone ahead and gotten all the slag knocked off of it from forging. Uh, it has been hardened and tempered. All it needs is an edge grind. It, do, it still does have quite a thick little edge ranging from about, I want to say a sixteenth to eighth of an inch uh, along that whole edge. I just need to put that final edge bevel on there. It already does have a bevel, but I'm going to put a secondary bevel on there for the actual edge. But now that this is all cleaned up, the next step is going to be forging a cross guard and a butt cap for this handle. Um, I might only forge the cross guard and then just use a uh, washer for the butt cap, but it all depends on what kind of aesthetics I'm going to end up with. So we'll start off with that guard and we'll see how it goes from there. So we'll be starting off with this file right here. It is a old Hudson Tool Company. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that marking on there. But that's what we're going to be using for the forward guard. Obviously, we're not going to need all this steel, so we will end up hot cutting off. Ooh, wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. I got a new camera stand, by the way. If you like it, let me know. I'm going to be trying a bunch of new camera angles with this thing. Anyway, uh, we're not going to need all this material. So we're going to be using this section where the files tang down to probably about here to forge the guard shape we're going for. I'm going to keep this because this is going to be incorporated into the design. So. Let's get to it. Just going to start off with my hot cut tool and we're just going to shear the excess material off so that we're not going to need in order to form the guard the way we're making it. Uh, about half this file is all that's going to be necessary for what we're building here today. Now that we've got that cut off, we're just going to go ahead and start working on the actual shaping of the guard. Uh, what we're going to do here is a bar down in front of the knuckles on the knuckle bow, leading off into a small spoon on the end of the knuckle bow, with a quill on on the back that has a scroll. So we're going to go over to the anvil and use that to radius everything so we can stretch things out a little faster. Now that we're about where we're looking for, we're going to take it over to the vise and hot file the rag off. Be very aware of where your fingers and knuckles are when you're doing this. You do not want third degree burns on your hands. You could do this with an angle grinder or a belt sander, but I just didn't feel like taking the time to let it cool down. Uh, so I could do that with one of those tools. It's easier just to stick it back in the forge, grab a file, and do this. You can remove material pretty fast that way. Next thing we're going to do is start working on that scroll for the blade catch that's going to be the rear quillen for this guard. Next thing we're just going to start rounding up the corners on the end of this so that way we can make that nice spoon shape that's going to be the end of the knuckle bow part of this guard. And now we're just going to stretch out that spoon, make it nice and wide and round all the way through. That way when we give it the final shape we give it, it should turn out looking quite nice. 
Now we're just going to go back over to the horn of the anvil, so that way we can use the radius on the horn to stretch out a little more length from this, because it was a little thicker than I wanted it to be in that central area. And now we're just going to start using a dull chisel as a slot punch tool to start punching out the slots for where the tang is going to fit up into this guard. You'll notice I'm dipping it in water from time to time just to keep the chisel cool so that way it doesn't deform as I'm working the metal here. Another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes it doesn't shear out cleanly. I actually ended up running out of gas working on this section so I had to run and go get some more and I forgot to record the heat where I punched all the way through. But now we're just going to level everything back out now that we've got that hole punched and start working on the finishing shapes of the guard. First, we're going to tune up that section that we stretched out now that we've got the length and thickness we want out of it over the horn. Just going to use that radius part of the horn to match it and make sure everything comes out nice and straight. Now we're just going to give it the shape that we're after for that knuckle bow. We do want a nice tight bend right in front of the hand where we want it to come down. So we take it over to the face and then over to the heel of the anvil where it's got that nice taper to get a nice round sharp bend to it right where we want it. Did kink a little bit so I had to straighten that out right there. And then we also come back to the horn and reverse that spoon out away from the hand so it guides any blade that comes down onto that knuckle bow away from the hand rather than towards it. Now what I've done here is I've just slid it down onto the sword tang and I'm just using a pair of scroll tongs in order to adjust that rear quill on where I want it for that blade catch on the rear end. Just bent it down and going to kind of bend it back and out a little ways and then off center it from the blade ever so slightly because the historical examples would have something slightly off center if they had that type of blade catch. Here you can see I'm using the tang on the anvil at a lower heat to just kind of make sure that my slot fits perfectly on the sides here. I wanted to make sure that there were no gaps in between. And I've sped this up for you so it doesn't take as long, but basically just using a low heat to hot fit it right up against the edge where I want it. So that way everything fits nice and snug, no gaps. So obviously it's much later in the day. Today got pretty busy, so I ended up having to put the projects on the side. But this is how far we ended up getting. We got that guard forged out for the forward guard on the sword. We've got a knuckle guard on this end that's nice and solid. And then we've got a rear quill on there for catching. It's a small sword catch on the rear. Obviously a lot of cleanup work needs to be done, but that file pattern running through here is gonna be revealed when I do my cleanup work on it. So it will end up looking quite nice on this little sword. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to be working on the handle, finishing on the guard, as well as a, either a, pala, a pommel or some kind of uh, hand stop on the rear end of that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what style I'm going to do for that just yet. Um, I have decided, uh, thanks to Kurt commenting down below on that last video on this sword, I'm going to do leather on the ends and a wood centerpiece, so that way it should have a really beautiful contrast with the, you know, the, uh, the darker uh, leather and the lighter wood in the center. So we'll see how that turns out. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, that way you don't miss out when I upload future videos. Uh, until next time, God bless. Love you guys. Stay safe out there.